Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. I thought I'd do another live show because earlier I was in the middle of one and then I actually had to I had to go. Um, so I just wanted to, to, to start a new one. I said I would be back today, so I'm just keeping that promise. Um, the, the last one, Bitcoin, was around 10,700, 10,800 or so. Um, but I had to get going because there was a, a leak on our roof. So I had to get that worked out. Um, but anyways, you know, I, I wanted to come back on live. There were a lot of questions earlier, um, and uh, you know, I wanted to see if people still had questions because I was not able to look at all the ones earlier. And then also, we're of course going to just look at the markets here because um, it has been a very exciting day. Uh, so if you have questions, you can put them. You know, you can put them in the uh, in the comment section. And I'll try to get to them as we kind of work our way through the show. Also, I would appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up uh, so that we can, you know, so that the YouTube alg algorithms will work and, and uh, promote the video. And then we'll just go ahead and jump in. Um, so yeah, so feel free to, to leave comments. Um, yeah, and, 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 and once, we, once we get going here, I'm gonna go through a few charts first just to kind of get everyone up to speed. Um, you know, these are, I, I showed this, you know, on, on my Twitter, this again is just the, the regression band of Bitcoin fit to none bubble data. And you guys have, you know, you guys have heard me talk about this a lot and, and, and sometimes I get criticized for the repetition, but at the end of the day, it's not, it's not that complicated. It's, it's really not that complicated in terms of looking into historically where you should be buying Bitcoin and historically where you should be selling Bitcoin. Um, and it's all about looking at these macro moves. Now, the interesting thing, right, about the current move is that despite the fact, despite how amazing this move has felt, um, you know, the move from $9,900 to 11000 is it's hardly even noticeable, right? It's hardly even noticeable on this chart. And it just gives you an idea of you know what could come over the next several years. So you know imagine imagine in this last market cycle when we you know when we very quickly saw one of those moves up, it was only the beginning, and and the euphoria that you feel today, maybe you're up you know a significant percentage on your crypto holdings. The euphoria that you feel today is is actually going to be dwarfed most likely by the euphoria you might feel in two or three years or so. So you need to be prepared for that because the euphoria, as we've said, it's but a fleeting moment in time. Um, you're gonna look back on, on, those, on those euphoric times and wish that you did more than just feel a certain way. You're gonna wish that you acted on the situation. So I'm not saying that, you know, I mean, Bitcoin, as far as I'm concerned, Bitcoin is still within our buy region. I mean, you can see it's clearly within our regression band, and this is historically the best times to buy Bitcoin. Um, it might take a while to, you know, for it to really get out of the regression band and go into the spike of the bubble, but historically speaking, this is the time to buy Bitcoin. So, since this is the time, you know, to sorry, I'm looking at some of the questions. Since this is the time, not that it's financial advice, since it's the time that I'm buying Bitcoin, um, you know, you have to you have to just give yourself like take a pause and and ask yourself, okay, when would be a time to sell? Um, you know, would you sell? Would your future self sell at a hundred k? If the answer is yes, then I mean, good. I'm I'm glad you're thinking about the fact that it's you know at the end of the day, you know, these bubbles aren't going to last forever. Now. If you find yourself, like many of you will, when Bitcoin is $100,000, at some point, it probably will be 100 k and you find yourself at that point, a lot of you will not want to sell because you'll think it's gonna keep going up. And it might, it might go to 200 k um, You know, there's no telling where I could go, but again, it's all about, you know, having a plan and sticking to it. Um, and, and I just wanted to, to, you know, to reiterate, this is our regression line. We're still within our, uh, you know, the, the bulk here of the regression ban, we're not above it. You, see, you can see that we did come above it earlier in 2020, but what's the nice thing about the regression line? It monotonically increases. So our fair value is theoretically 
always increasing. And because it's always increasing, you know, it, it treats different capitulations differently. You know, and if you look at this chart here, uh, you can see that the first capitulation came to our fair value. Okay, this was $3,100, but at the time it was the fair value of Bitcoin. This capitulation, while it only came down to $3,800, okay, or so, or I mean, on the daily time frame, it's a little bit higher, but because it, it came down um, to that point, but later on, it actually came to the bottom of the regression band. And you can see that in the last cycle, we also came to the bottom of the regression band, which also occurred after the capitulation in early 2015. So there are some similarities in early 2015, capitulation to the fair value, and then we basically moved sideways, we went back down. This capitulation here was not nearly as scary as this one, but both ultimately ended up in the same area, the bottom of the regression band, and then we continue to work our way up. So first one, fair value, down to the fair value, move sideways, short-term speculative bubble, um, capitulation down to the bottom of the regression band, the lower half of it, and back to fair value. I mean, again, it's not rocket science, it's just, it's just looking at, at historically where getting into Bitcoin is a good idea. And if you if you look at, at you know, just the market cycle ROI of Bitcoin um, so far uh, during this market cycle, you can actually see that we are right where we were during the last market cycle. So the first market cycle, this is what the first one looks like, comes straight up and then back down. And it came, it was, it peaked at around, you know, 250 days or so. The second cycle, and it, yeah, so it peaked here at 250 days. Second cycle came up here and it peaked at around 700 and something days. And you have to remember too, this is daily data, not like minute wicks that could have occurred to find that ROI. So just what the daily close was. So first cycle, second cycle, you can see they're getting longer. The ROI is diminishing. Third cycle. Third cycle peaked at an ROI from market cycle bottom of 100x because we know that the price of Bitcoin around the bottom was around $200, slightly below, and then it peaked at around $20,000. Okay, and this time it took you know close to 1,100 days, just shy of 1,100 days. Currently, we are right where we were during the third cycle. So you can see, after around you know almost 600 days, the ROI from market cycle bottom was around 3x, okay? So this was the case in the last market cycle, and this is the case in the current market cycle. It was about 3x. That doesn't mean that we're gonna keep pace. You can see that at one, at one point in time, the second cycle here was keeping pace with the first one. Over those first, like say, month or two, it was keeping pace, but it could not ultimately keep up with that acceleration, with that, that how quickly that you know your return on investment came back to you. It could not keep up with it, okay? And you can also see that the third the third cycle actually initially started higher than the second cycle. If you if you really zoom in right here and, and look, you can see that initially speaking, the third cycle had an ROI from market cycle bottom that was better than the second cycle, and it looks like better than the first cycle because it, it just bounced off the bottom. Um, now the fourth cycle, which is the cycle that we're currently in, uh, had this speculative bubble in 2019, which had us traverse both the third cycle and the second cycle. But even with that speculative bubble in 2019, we were still a far cry from the ROI at that point during the first cycle, because after 200 days, the ROI from market cycle bottom was only around 4x, whereas in the first cycle by that point, it was already over 10x, okay? so came above the second cycle, back down, came below the third, and now it's basically right on top of where the third one is. Now, to give you an idea of how, you know, I mean, a lot of a lot of you guys are here, but some of you some of you were not. If you were not, just take a minute to think about the ROI you you already feel. Maybe you're already up 3x or so because you were buying Bitcoin near the bottom. You likely feel fairly euphoric, right? And um and hold on, I'm just reading some of the comments. All right, so since the fourth cycle is currently at this point, the idea, right, is if, if, okay, first of all, if the four-year cycle theory is true, 
which I'm not saying it is, I don't, I really don't think it is, um, then we would probably, I mean, we're, we would ultimately peak somewhere over here, regardless of whether the four-year cycle is true. I don't think it is, and I don't think we're even remotely close to that being true, but even if it were, the ROI would, would likely lag behind this cycle. So it's not gonna be able to keep pace with it. And likely what I think is, is it's gonna take even longer and then you know we're gonna come out somewhere over here and see maybe about a 30X um, from the bottom. So this is generally you know just what I wanna do it, to show really quick. Um, now, I just wanna pull up um, some of the charts. Before I do that, why don't I see if there's any questions in the chat? Let's see, do we have any other good questions? So Shadow says, could we argue that just because the first three cycles have gotten longer than the last, that three data points aren't enough to make that assumption? Um, yeah, I mean, of course, of course, there's no guarantees that lengthening cycle theory is true. I'm a proponent of lengthening cycle theory because I think that that's what the data suggests. I feel like, you know, I don't look at this and say that we're gonna see shortening cycles. I don't look at this and say we're gonna see four year cycles. I look at this and say, first cycle, second cycle, third cycle, first one from bottom to peak was 200 and something days. Um, and even if you don't take it from peak, if you just take it from bottom to bottom, this one was around 400 days. This one was, um, you know, shy of 1200. This one was over 1400. I would gander to think that this one's going to be longer. Um, and if you just measure it from peak to, or bottom to peak, this one was around 250, this one was around 750, and this one was around um, 11,050. So this is why I think that it's the next one's going to be longer. Of course, three data points are not, you know, they wouldn't, and say like, a, if you were trying to publish something in an academic, academic journal, you know, three data points is not enough, right? It's not enough. Um, and we know that, and, and, I don't, and I'm not trying to say it is. My point is that we have limited data. This is what the data suggests. I can't tell you what it's going to do absolutely. You know, all we can do is speculate, and, and this is the point. I mean, if, if it were easy, if, if we knew for a fact what was gonna happen, then the market would become very efficient and adjust automatically to that. We don't fully know what's going to happen. I'm giving you what my interpretation of this data is and why I think the way I do. But I reserve the right to admit that one day I could say, you know what, I was wrong. Maybe maybe it is a four-year cycle. Maybe this cycle will peak at 800 days and, and then go back down. I don't really know. Um, but I'm telling you what I think is going to happen based on historical data. And I think it makes sense in terms of pushing Bitcoin up to, you know, 100K. Um, it's going to take a lot of volume. And it's going to take, you know, way more volume than we've ever seen before. Um, in terms of, I mean, not just in terms of the absolute, but relative, relatively speaking, uh, from where we are now to getting to 100K, it's going to take a significant amount of volume, and um, it's going to be a long ride. I mean, I think we're going to get there. Uh, I hope, but it's possible we don't make it. I mean, it's possible we peak at 80K or something. Um, so you just have to consider this. Uh, let me pull back up this chart here. Okay, so let me see if we have any more questions here. Um, so someone says, what is thinking crypto says, what are your price predictions for the next run up? What price points are you planning to cash out at? I mean, over the next market cycle, I'll be cashing out on the way up just based on that risk metric that I talk about on the channel. And I mean, you can't, if, if your goal is to just set some arbitrary price point and only sell, if it gets to that point, that is how ultimately you could get, you know, really hurt in, 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 in your finances because you, you, you think, okay, I can only sell if my portfolio gets to such, you know, a certain value. Maybe you think it has to be like a million dollars or a or hundred thousand dollars or whatever, whatever it is, like whatever your goal is. You think that you cannot sell until it gets to that point. You know, this is not the way you should think. You should think more in terms of like, you know, the volatility at the time, how quickly it's moving up, um, and and go 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 about it that way rather than thinking about say like an absolute number. 
that may never actually get hit. So you don't want to watch a, a bull market come and go because it didn't hit your target. I mean, if your target was say 25K in the last market cycle, I mean, when it was, when the price of Bitcoin was, you know, 15K, 25K just seemed like a week away, right? I mean, it didn't really seem like it was that much, of, didn't seem like it was that much to ask. But in hindsight, I mean, we never made it. And we never, you know, we made it up to around 20K and then we just went down. And we have not been back to 20K since. Um, so you just have to consider that setting a certain number is, is not the best approach, in my opinion. Not that this is financial advice. Um, yeah, so someone says, could a global recession affect the upcoming cycle link? I do think it could. Um, if, if the economy were just to completely crash, uh, you know, I think that this could negatively impact Bitcoin. Um, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that statement because, you know, the, the argument is that, well, Bitcoin was born out of the, you know, out of the 2008 recession and therefore during a recession, it has to, um, it has to do well. Well, Bitcoin was not built, you know, to do well during, during recessions. I mean, the whole point was right to fight against inflation. Um, it was not just, it was not just made to say, okay, this asset is going to perform well during a recession. This was never the case. Uh, so if the entire global economy were to really start collapsing, um, then, and people, you know, can't afford at all, you know, what they're, you know, to, if they just can't afford to live, they might start cashing out crypto. Now the question, right, is are the people who are capitulating to pay their rent, are they going to have a significant effect on the market? I don't know if they would or not. I mean, there's a chance that they might not, even even with the economy the way it is today, despite the fact that it seems like the stock market should really be a lot lower than it is, clearly that's not the case. Um, and we did experience a V-shaped recovery. I mean, we could go straight back down, uh, but for the meantime, we have gone back up. And in the same manner, the crypto markets have, have recovered, you know, back to where they were and higher since earlier this year. So people do tend to liquidate high-risk assets during recessions. That's just the cold, hard truth. And I just don't really think there's enough data yet to know what people would do with Bitcoin during that time. I mean, I know we would all like to believe that that people would just flood into Bitcoin because they think it's okay. It's like a safe haven against the government just continuing to print money um, every single day, uh, thus devaluing the dollar. So it's kind of like your safe haven from the U.S. dollar or whatever country you live in. Um, but I think that still remains to be seen whether that would actually happen. And that's not been shown yet at all. And really, practically speaking, I mean, the U.S. I mean, we're experiencing deflation right now in the economy because people aren't spending their money. Um, so in that sense, I mean, it's not even really combating. Uh, I mean, they're trying to pump more money in, right? I mean, that's what they're doing. But I mean, at the same time, people aren't spending a lot of their money. So. Um, someone asked, what are your thoughts on the Bitcoin dominance mid to long term? So what I think will happen is um, I, I can't say, I mean, you didn't ask about short term, but I, I can't say in the short term what will happen. If Bitcoin, if the price of Bitcoin goes to 12K and 13K and 14K in the next week, the dominance is going to go up because the altcoin market will almost assuredly not be able to keep up. It's just the way the market works when Bitcoin moves. You have to respect the king. I mean, it's the king whether you like it or not. This is the market mover. Um, sometimes it kind of gets dragged along by, by maybe Ethereum or another coin. Um, but eventually, you know, if Bitcoin starts to crash, the market will crash. And if Bitcoin makes a run to 14K in, in a very short period of time, you can bet the dominance of Bitcoin is going to start increasing rapidly again, not only because the price of Bitcoin is going up, but because the altcoins are likely going to be bleeding against it. Not all of them, but most of them would be bleeding against fiat and against Bitcoin. Um, so I, I, I think that at some point when Bitcoin makes a run, at especially $20,000, whenever that happens, the Bitcoin dominance will go up significantly. Um, and, 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 and once again, it'll paint the narrative to, or, and especially say like Bitcoin maximalists will say, you know, okay, well, Bitcoin 
Bitcoin is the only coin worth holding, you know, all altcoins are going to zero. The same narrative repeats. I mean, it's just gets kind of old after a while because you see the same narrative constantly that altcoins are dead and altcoins are dead until they're not, right? And then once altcoins are alive again, people forget that they were dead a week ago. You know, it's just, it's just short-term memory loss. Um, but in terms of Bitcoin going to 20K, that is not a move you want to miss out on. Um, because when it does, you know, the rest of the market will bleed. And likely if your entire portfolio is in altcoins, your, your portfolio at that time would bleed with respect to Bitcoin um, quite a bit. Um, so this is why I say, you know, Bitcoin is, is the largest holding of my portfolio. And it always will be. I mean, it's the market mover. It is the index. If Bitcoin goes up, it means, you know, it means crypto. Let me say this. If the entire market cap of crypto is, is going up and up and up, it means Bitcoin's going up. But if, um, but if Bitcoin's going up, it doesn't necessarily mean that the rest of the market's going up. Um, and I'm talking, I'm talking about like subtle shifts where you know a few coins go up two or three x that are like numbers 768 on coin market cap or something. I'm not talking about that. Uh, those have completely, they're completely inconsequential, right, to to this line of thinking. Um, but, you know, just thinking about the dominance. So in terms of, say, a full market cycle, I would expect, um, you know, whenever Bitcoin makes, say, a run to 14K, dominance will go up. Whenever it goes up to 20K, dominance is going to go up. Once it gets to 20K, dominance will start to go down. Uh, this is when a lot of coins will really start to make moves. Um, and coins are making moves already. But once Bitcoin gets to 20K and then stabilizes at 20K, this is when a lot of coins would really start to move. This is when, you know, you, you look at those coins that historically don't really move that much and you wonder, okay, well, what are they doing? Why are they not moving? There's a lot of coins that just bleed with respect to Bitcoin until Bitcoin makes it back to its previous all-time high. Of course, there's short-term fluctuations, but for the most part, they're going to continue to bleed with respect to Bitcoin. Litecoin is one of them. Yes, Litecoin had a great day, but if you look at, you know, at the history, Litecoin was at 385, um, you know, Litecoin was at 385 in 2017 and Bitcoin was at 20K and Bitcoin is only 50% down and Litecoin is, you know, much further. I mean, it's, it's only what, like a seventh of its former value. Um, and I mean, this would be true for a lot of coins, but Litecoin is one of those ones that I don't hold right now. First of all, because we know that if you, if you map out the efficient frontier and calculate your risk adjusted returns, Litecoin has no place in your portfolio right now. It doesn't mean that on certain days it won't perform well. It doesn't mean you shouldn't necessarily consider buying it in lieu of, say, an upcoming halving for Litecoin. But in general, um, just based on historical data, not what Ben thinks, it is, it's, it's not the best one to hold. And it's not to say that it won't go up. It's just that if, you know, for every, for every, um, you know, every sat you have in, in Litecoin, as opposed to, say, Ethereum, every dollar you have in, in Litecoin as opposed to Ethereum, you know, there's an opportunity cost there. And if you're holding Litecoin over Ethereum, then that tells me if, if say you only hold Litecoin and you hold no Ethereum, then what it would tell me is you think that Litecoin is going to perform better than Ethereum this market cycle. And if you believe that, great. If you don't believe that, then why do you own Litecoin? This is, this is my question. Um, a similar story could be made for XRP. Um, by the way, so so I didn't finish that train of thought. So Bitcoin, once Bitcoin gets to 20K, the dominance, so the dominance will go up as it goes to 20K. Once it gets to 20K and stabilizes, it'll it'll drop like a rock. I mean, it'll it'll probably drop significantly um, below our multi, you know, our eight, 10 year trend line, except for the, the speculative bubble that formed in 2017. Um, and then at some point it'll go back up during you know part during you know later on in the market cycle bitcoin will make a run to 100k or wherever it's going to go dominance of bitcoin will skyrocket again and then at the very end of the market cycle um dominance will drop for a few weeks and then it'll go back up this is most likely what's going to happen um and this is you know this is just what i think i i obviously could be wrong but this is what i where i think bitcoin and the way that it's going to interact with the with the rest of the cryptocurrency market will happen over the next three to four years. <laughs> um, when the next cycle peaks, will the prices of Lambo skyrocket? Because everyone will be buying one, so buy Lambo now before Bitcoin peaks. 
I cannot, I, I cannot really know the answer to that. Um, I certainly will not be wasting my money on a, on a Lambo, though. Um, someone says, what do you think of the gap below 9,900? If we're in a bull run now, that gap is against that idea, or maybe one day, one daily gap without fill. So Santiago asked that question. So Santiago, let me give you my thoughts. Um, obviously, there's a good chance that that gap could be filled. It doesn't have to be, though. Um, but remember, if you've watched the channel before, we talk about the 20 week moving average. I know this is getting boring for some of you um, because we've talked about it so much, but the 20 week moving average is our support line. And again, present day, the 20 week moving average is at, um, uh, it's right, or sorry, I'm not looking at the, let me, let me go to this chart. So I'm not looking at the log band here. Um, and some of these are, are relics from, from earlier. So if we put on, say, uh, the weekly chart, so we'll put on the weekly chart, and then we're going to add an indicator. We're just going to add a moving average, simple moving average. We'll add the 20 week. Okay, so we're adding the 20 week. Um, you know, you can see support during the bull market, resistance during the bear, um, and the current the current uh, twenty week. It looks like, I guess it's oh yeah, I guess it's just gone up a lot recently. But yeah, it's it's around eighty five hundred dollars. I, I guess assuming that this is correct, um, it was eighty three hundred not that long ago. So um, eighty five eighty three right now, assuming this is correct, um, which means that the price of Bitcoin could drop down to the 20 week moving average, which historically has been our support, right? During a bull market and still be in a bull market. Um, I know that a drop down to the 20 week seems crazy um, from our current price because that would be a 22% drop. But as we've shown before, that was par for the course during the last market cycle. I mean, you can see this was a 40% drop, another 40% drop, 30% um, drop, you know, 26% drop. I mean, when you look, when you look at a market cycle and you say, you know, this looks amazing. Well, I mean, it was, but it was a hard road. I mean, these were, there were a lot of, a lot of 30 to 40% sell-offs. There was never a 50% sell-off though during the bull run, but there's going to be a lot of 30 to 40% retracements. So, I mean, it's completely possible that we retrace back down to, to fill that gap and still maintain the bull run. I mean, this is, Bitcoin volatility. Again, if Bitcoin were to drop to $9,900 or 9500 this will just be business as usual. I mean, nothing to see here, guys. Just continue to DCA and, and go about your life. Um, you know, it's all about perspective, right? I mean, if, if, if you're worried about, say, a 20% drop, then, then Bitcoin is going to chew you up and spit you out. Because I can assure you, over the next three years, there's going to be multiple drops like this. Um, and actually here, Handley is, is just say like, well, I guess this one doesn't show all the ones I wanted to show, but this one shows daily 10% moves. Um, and, and so you can, you know, you can see these, these, these lines that show you the frequency at which they occur. Um, and the, sim the similar thing goes for daily 10% drops. I mean, this is again, just par for the course for Bitcoin. So don't think it can't happen um, and, and, and completely destroy the bull market. Um, now, if we fall to the 20 week moving average and we see candles closing below it, then I would say, yeah, we're kicking the can down the road in terms of the bull market really getting in full gear. Because in the past, we hold the 20 week moving average as support during the bull market. And, you know, I get questions about, well, why don't you use the 21? Why don't you use this EMA? You can use whatever you want. I mean, a lot, you can, you can figure out a, a different one that'll probably tell a similar story. I mean, the 21 move, the 21 week is going to be really similar to the 20 week. I just use the 20 week and you can see how well I feel like it predicts where the bottom was during a bull market. So we've had the golden cross, we're above the 20 week, we still need to confirm the 20 week as support. And the reason I say that again is because in 2019, we were above the 20 week for you know half a year and then we ultimately failed to hold it as support. And most people don't consider this to be part of the bull market, right? I mean, going from 14K back down to 3,800 is not really part of the bull market. Um, so the question, right, is now are we going to be part of the bull market? Um, 
one of the things you notice too is um, if you go back, if you well, first if you look in this cycle, you can see the 20 week is crossing the 50 week. So we were waiting for this. We knew it was going to happen because the 50 week is going to go down, the 20 week is going to go up based on the candles it's starting to exclude. And then the 20 week will be above the 50 week, which is what happened last time. So the 20 week went above the 50 week. And then the next time we came to the 20 week here, we held it as support. So hopefully we'll see something similar. And you can also note that in the last cycle, when this happened, by the time, you know, when the 20 and 50 week crossed, the price was 35% higher when it held the 20 week moving average as support. If we were to see something similar today or in the next few months, if, if we were to say 35% higher than the cross, if it happened to be the same as last time, which I'm not saying it is, that would put the 20 week moving average at around 11,500. So this is just where it would put it if the same thing happened. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying that it has to. Um, but just zooming out again, you can see the, the general larger trend of, of the market. Um, so yeah. Uh, let me see, what else do we have? Um, let me let me pull up um, some, let me see if there's any more questions here. Are there, do we have any more questions? Let me know up in the chat. By the way, I do have a, um, a Telegram group, a public Telegram group. You guys should check it out. I just put it in the chat so you guys can see it. You should join. We have over 4,500 people. Um, so check out, check out the Telegram chat if you guys want to discuss these charts. Nick says, Ben, I got Bitcoin in March and I've learned near everything I know from you. I can't thank you enough. Hey, thanks. Uh, appreciate it. I'm glad you um, uh, enjoy it. Someone says, what are your non-trading view, non view charts coded in Python? Yes, some of them are coded in Python. Some of them are coded in MATLAB. And, you know, it's, it's a mix between Python and MATLAB. So if Bitcoin, someone says, what do you think the next support would be if Bitcoin goes down? I mean, psychologically speaking, I think a lot of people are going to consider 10.5 to be an area, um, mainly because it was the local, it was the top last time in 2020, February of 2020, 10.5 was our local top. That was where a lot of people were waiting to break before they considered, okay, it's not just a long-term downtrend, right? If you draw that trend line everyone likes to draw, you know, you can say, okay, I mean, the little, you know, the candle, the candle is broken above this trend line, um, and and it was around 10.5, uh, or well, that's not true. It, this one was lower, but once we got above 10.5, this is when we just immediately shot up to 11,000. Um, I'd say 10.5 is is probably a decent point. Uh, below that, maybe 10k. I mean, 80, the the 20 week moving average is at 8,500. So if we were to see a really red day or a couple days in a row. I would hope that the 20 week moving average would hold, which is 85, 84. If that doesn't hold, then we're, you know, we're just looking to go lower. There's the 100 week moving average, which is in the 7,000s. And there's the 200 week moving average, which is, a, is, a, is at around 6,000. And if you go to the regression band and we show the 200 week moving average. So if we're just kind of thinking what would be not necessarily the worst case, but one of the worst case scenarios would be going down to the 200 week moving average at 6300, which actually happens to correspond with the bottom of the regression line. So the, the bottom of our accumulation region. So again, I'm not saying you should hope for the, tw the 200 week moving average, but you must always be ready for it during a Bitcoin market cycle. I mean, anytime you have to be ready for the 200 week moving average. Okay, let's talk about Chainlink. Someone's asking about Chainlink. So Chainlink is one of those coins we cover a lot, and, and the reason, right, is because it it is not correlated to Bitcoin. It tends to move up when Bitcoin's staying still, and it goes down when Bitcoin goes up. So um, uh, you know, one of the reasons why why I talk about Link, talk about Chainlink a lot, is because, again, it improves your risk-adjusted returns. And we've been making videos on Link for a long time. These are our regression lines. The yellow one is our fair value. The green one is like, are you kidding me? This is the value now, you know, super undervalued. And then the red line is our overvaluation. Um, I speculated over here, right here, go back and watch the videos. I speculated that if, if we get above the 20 week, if Bitcoin gets above the 20 week, which is color coded in blue, which it did, 
then we would likely go back up to the top of the regression line, which is exactly what we did. And we held it as resistance yet again. Um, but good luck telling people that when the time comes. Uh, so I took profits right here, actually slightly below. I think I took profits that are on 805, um, converted to converted them to Ethereum again at 235, and then we watched Ethereum go up. And then those Ethereum profits got converted to Bitcoin at a ratio of 0 0.0305. And from there, I mean it's been it's been just riding one wave after another. It got converted at 0 0.0305, and now the Ethereum ratio has continued to drop to 0 0.029. Um, so it's all about these positional swing trades. I do not do day trading. You know, the price of Bitcoin, as I've said many times, can be attributed to a random walk, geometric Brownian motion, than anything that you could even remotely hope to predict, right? I mean, you can't predict these short-term moves um, uh, accurately and consistently, right? So you just go with these key positional moves um, based on what the data is telling you. And I've spoken, spoken about that a lot. I mean, you guys know that I have the risk metric. I use the risk metric to make these swing trades and it's been working out so far. And the nice thing with respect to link, right? Since that was what the question was about is we started with link. We went, we got out of link at 805 and not all of link. I still hold four fifths of my position in link. Just, I, I got rid of a fifth of it. So I'm not saying I sold all my link. I would never, I don't have any plans to do that um, for at least a few more years. Um, sold one fifth of my link, went to Ethereum, Ethereum pumped. We said, okay, well, if Bitcoin moves, let's put a stop loss in. So we put a stop loss in on Ethereum at 0 0.0305. That got triggered when Bitcoin made its move. Now the Bitcoin's making its move, you know, then the link Bitcoin ratio is bleeding, which means the link Bitcoin risk is bleeding, which means that we might get down to another buy zone. Um, and then you kind of come full circle. So you start with link, you go to Ethereum, you go to Bitcoin, when, when Bitcoin moves, eventually Link is going to bleed like crazy against it just because they really don't move together. That'll present a key opportunity to buy Link. And the cycle continues. We move on, rinse and repeat. People capitulate their Link to the smart money. The smart money buys the Link when it's undervalued um, with respect to Bitcoin. And then Link starts pumping. The people that sold it to Bitcoin get discouraged because they just sold their Bitcoin um, or they just sold their Link and now they're watching it go up 2x again. And they, why do they keep falling for the same thing over and over and over? Uh, so it's just about repeating the cycle. Um, and I should remind you that if you if you want access to what I'm doing, just go to intothecryptoverse.com. So I'll put that in the in the comments as well. Um, just my little plug for for the premium list. You you do get access to a, a play by play of what I am doing in the market because I have a private Telegram alerts channel where I tell you what I'm doing and I post all sorts of charts um, about, about how I see the market, what I'm thinking. So do check it out. You can, you can also pay with cryptocurrency for, for six to 12 months to get a discount. Um, otherwise you can just pay monthly. And if you're, you know, there's, there's some feedback on here, people have left. Um, if, you, if you want to though, you can always join again, the public Telegram channel. And in that public Telegram channel, there's, a lot of people and you can ask them what they think of the premium list and you can say you know just get your opinion on it like what do you think and some people it's the right thing for them other people it's not the right thing for you so it just depends on what your goals are and what you're looking to get out of it so if you want to ask questions about it again just go to the public telegram channel and um uh go check it out so I'll just encourage you guys to do that because even if you don't want to sign up for the premium list, you can at least check out the public telegram channel and get to know the rest of the community, which is around 4,500 people. So link, I do not think is a scam. I don't think link is a scam. Link is, 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 is I think it's going to be one of the biggest, I mean, it already is. I mean, who are you kidding? I mean, um, if you, if you go back and look, uh, Link has outperformed Bitcoin so much during the bear market. If you take a a percent move here, I mean, this is against Bitcoin. It's gone up two thousand percent since July of twenty eighteen. So you know, I don't care what you think about Link. I, you know, to be completely honest, and I've said this before, I'm not claiming to be altruistic and 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 think that everyone needs to understand blockchain. We need to have everyone in the world using blockchain, I'm here to make money. Like, it's the only reason I'm here, you know? 
at the end of the day, it'll be great if 10 years from now it's incorporated into the world. But if I didn't make money during that, during that kind of like financial revolution or something, then I'm not going to really be that, you know, that impressed. I mean, I, I, it's the point is I want to make money during this time and I'm, I'm finding the assets that are the vehicles to help me grow my wealth. And I just, I mean, link is one of them and it does, you know, the, it, it solves the Oracle problem. It gives, gives projects the access, you know, the, the ability to access data off chain to provide a consistent and reliable source of that data. Um, and this is why I like link. And in addition, I like it because it improves my risk adjusted returns with respect to my entire portfolio. Um, it's just, it's just money. I mean, it's just data. It's just looking at the numbers and saying, you know, this is a trend I want to be a part of. Okay. This is a trend I want to be a part of. This is what it all, this is all it is. Yeah. I mean, of course, going up, does it make it, doesn't necessarily not make it a scam. That's not the point. I mean, the point is, is I would not invest in it if I thought it was a scam, even if it was going up. I do think it provides a real world solution. I just, I just said that, so I'm not going to repeat myself. Someone says, what is everyone's thoughts on, on Cardano ADA? You know, as I mentioned with ADA, I stopped buying it at 10 cents. Um, I made, I don't know how many videos when it was two cents, three cents, four cents, five cents, telling you I was buying ADA at those levels. And that once it got to 10 cents, I was going to stop. Um, and I'm sticking to that, you know, I mean, I think that ADA is going to go much higher over the next several years. I think that there's a good chance it's going to go a lot higher, but right now, you know, it, it was, it was two or three cents, not that long ago. I bought it up to 10 cents and I said, my, you know, my risk, my risk tolerance for ADA at that point is saturated. I can't continue to buy ADA. Um, at that level. So I stopped buying it at 10 cents. This is, uh, this is my opinion on, on ADA. I mean, I, I hold a lot of it. Believe me, I do hold a lot of it. I sold one fifteenth of my position a couple weeks ago because I was up like four X. I sold one fifth in terms of dynamically DCAing based on that risk metric. But you know, I'm holding, I'm holding the other 14 fifteenths of my position and I'm just waiting, you know, it's just a waiting game. All right, what other questions do we have, guys? Um, I did want to talk about Ethereum really quick, you know, because Ethereum, the ratio, if you look at, if you look at the, this is our regression line for Ethereum, and we made that video, right, a, a little while ago saying that this is the accumulation phase of a lifetime, and boy, I mean, it was very timely. If you take a measured move since I made that video, I mean, Ethereum's already up 40% which is significant because it was only about a week ago. So Ethereum's gone up 40% in about a week. And we said, you know, there's a chance we go down, but if we do, it's relatively short lived. And we didn't go down, we went up. And, and with Ethereum, again, we've, we've also shown this, which is just the, the log of the closing price divided by the fair value. And you can see, you know, this, when we're, when we're that devalued here, right? I mean, when we're, when we're all the way down in this region, it's historically, the time to buy. I mean, you can see like, um, if I fix this, if you see here, this was right before that move, um, right over here, you can see it moved up again here, another move up. So this is just what I use. The reason I, I took the log of it is because it allows you to actually see the moves relatively speaking rather than absolute. And, um, you can, you can see that if it's a negative number, so if it's below zero, you're taking the log of a number between zero and one, which makes it zero because it means that the closing price was lower than the fair value price. So when it's lower than zero, it means it's like among the best time to buy Ethereum. So um, what other questions do we have? You know, in terms of decentralized finance, I just want to warn people now. Okay, I'm just going to take this minute to warn people. I, first of all, I should say, I do use DeFi quite a bit. I earn interest all the time. Um, but you have to also consider, too, that considering something, if, if you see an interest rate that is higher than you could get in, in, say, any normal circumstance in the real world, then, you know, there are likely some underlying risks associated with it. 
some of those risks of DeFi are, you know, is the contract exploitable? Have all the bugs been worked out? And it's really hard to give an answer on that because if they've only been around for a few months or a few years, then most likely they have not really been battle tested to the point where you know that it's completely secure. So I'm just saying, be careful. I'm not trying to scare you away from DeFi. I'm just saying that you have to consider that there are risks associated with it, which is why I hold a significant portion of my portfolio just on a hardware wallet that I don't touch. You know, I don't, I don't do anything with it really. Um, but you just have to consider that if you're if you're using DeFi a lot and you're you know you're 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 lending out you're, you're lending out your assets and you're trying to collect interest or if you're you know if you're whatever you might be using if you're part of a liquidity pool, um, you just have to consider that there are risks associated with it. That's the whole point. So if if something happens, then you need to be ready for that. At the same time, I mean there are a lot of positive you know, there's a lot of upside, right? I mean, if, if you can earn interest, which I mean, I am using some of them to earn interest. If you can earn interest, then this is a good thing because not only is the value of your cryptocurrency going up during a potential bull run, you're also earning interest on it. So that when you do go to sell one day, you have more of it. So this is generally what I think about DeFi. Yeah, and there's also centralized finance. See, I mean, if, if you know, there's a lot of platforms where you can, you know, you can earn interest on um, you know, like on a centralized platform where you don't own the keys to your coins, but you you put it on the exchange and and you earn interest um, um, that way. So there's also centralized finance. There's decentralized finance. Most you know most crypto you know diehards gurus. And, and I mean it's good advice, right? Not to keep your coins on the exchange. Like if it's not your keys. It's not your it's not your crypto. I mean, that's just a general rule because we've seen so many exchanges get hacked over the years. Um, at the same time, there is a portion of the population that this would appeal to, despite the fact, you know, despite the, despite how crazy it may seem to you, there are there is a portion of the population that just simply does not want the responsibility to hold the keys to their coins. It just scares them and they don't want to do it. They don't want to go out and buy a hardware wallet and figure it out. And if you think about it, a lot of people wouldn't be able to figure it out even if they wanted to because they just, they're just they not versed with that type of that world, that technology. They just would honestly have a hard time figuring it out. And what will likely happen is they would end up probably messing it up somehow. Um, so there is a portion of the population that that would appeal to anyways. Um, even, if that, you know, even if that rubs some people the wrong way, that's just the truth of the matter. Um, well, what other questions do we have, guys? Let's look. What's Bitcoin doing? Well, we're just north of eleven thousand. Um, you know, and we've we've been talking about Bitcoin for a while. We said be ready for a speculative bubble this summer. Be ready for it because there's a chance it could happen. I mean, we saw the speculative bubble in 2019, right? Where we went to 14k. We said be ready for a speculative bubble in in 2020. And by that, what I mean is if we start to come out of the regression line, then in my opinion, we're getting into bubble territory. It might be a shorter term one. It might not be one that takes us up to the regression line, um, but it doesn't make it not a bubble. If we're, if we're, you know, if we get moving to say 15K, 16K, 17K, 18K, in my opinion, this would be a short term speculative bubble. And I doubt we would make it up to the bottom of the sub regression line, which at present time, is around forty-five thousand dollars. Okay, I think what's more likely again is that our fair value is going to be around thirty thousand dollars out in twenty twenty-three. We're gonna, you know, if you just kind of imagine the regression line kind of goes out like this, or just roughly like that, and then the sell one comes out, you know, up here, and then the price maybe maybe does come back into a bubble and then comes back down, or you know, just some something like that, and then ultimately goes into a bubble and then you sell up here in 2023, 2024, and then we continue marching on. This is my general thoughts on the market, something like that, right? Looking at the, the macro scale, okay? And again, we might not, I mean, it's possible we never go back down to the 200 week moving average during this market cycle. It might be five years before we revisit the 200 week moving average, but just be ready for it if it happens. Uh, 
Um, okay, uh, James says, how is the risk metric calculated? I'm not going to tell you the exact equation, but he says, okay, I understand volatility is a factor, but how does it consider, but does it consider historical price? Yeah, it does consider historical price. Every asset, every risk metric made for any individual asset only is, it, it, it looks at the historical price of that asset and the volatility of that asset. Ryan says, hey, do you care about gold or silver? Yes, I actually made recent videos on gold, or, gold and silver. And sometime later this week, probably, I'm going to publish risk metrics on gold, silver. So gold USD, silver USD, and silver gold. So risk metrics for those coming out hopefully the, later this week. I've actually already made them. I just haven't taken the time to make a video on them. If Link reaches 1K end of year. So first of all, Link is not going to be at 1,000 at the end of the year. Um, I actually put out what I thought was a realistic projection for Link based on, on, on all the data. And, and looking at it, I think the most bullish scenario would be for Link to get to $80 by the time Bitcoin gets to $20,000 if it happens in 16 months. If it happens before then, Link is not getting to $80. And again, the only way it gets to $80, if, if, if Bitcoin takes another 16 months, 18 months to get to $20,000, and Link continues this trend with respect to Bitcoin. So I know 80 case, or $80 for Link sounds like a lot, and it is, um, but it's basically just an extrapolation of this uptrend and it taking until it taking Bitcoin another 16 months to get to a sustainable 20K. Again, it could get to 20K tomorrow. It's not, I mean, I don't think it is. It could get to 20K in early 2021, but I don't think it would be a sustainable 20K until later in 2021. Yeah, XRP, I see the questions. I've told you guys my opinions on XRP. Um, it's, it's not one of the coins you wanna hold for, for most of the market cycle. It's just one that you might consider getting at, at a couple key times. One of those times being when Bitcoin gets to its previous all-time high, and the other time being when Bitcoin um, is kind of at the end of its bull run. You don't really want to hold XRP, in my opinion, not that it's financial advice, um, when when Bitcoin is is just kind of sitting um, or you know moving up or in a bear market. Is you, you want to wait till Bitcoin gets to those key milestones before before even thinking about it. And by the way, if Link does get to $80, or I'm not saying that it has to, this was my most bullish estimate for a Link. So the most bullish estimate for Link that I could see over the next 16 months would be it getting to $80 if it takes Bitcoin 16 months to get to 20K. If Bitcoin gets to, you know, if it, if it, if it gets there sooner, it's not gonna happen, right, most likely. And even if it takes 16 months, this is the most bullish scenario. If it falls out of the trend line, so if, if Link Bitcoin falls out of the trend line and does something like this, then it won't get to $80. $80. So $80 is not really my, I wouldn't say it's what I project Link to get to, it's just what the data says it would get to if it stays in that trend line, okay? That's all, that's all I'm saying with Link. I mean, in terms of like a projection, I'm not saying it's going to get to $80. $80. I'm just saying that if it were to get to $80, it would likely be around this time um, if it stays in that trend line and Bitcoin takes that line to get to 20K um, and it would be somewhere, you know, maybe even above this regression band. Ultimately speaking, I don't think it's going to make it to $80 by that time. That was just the most bullish scenario that I could imagine. I'm not saying it will get to $80. It's just the most bullish, bullish scenario. And I mean, if you're asking my entry points for Link, I, I just base it on the risk metric. And I mean, I have to I have to reserve some stuff, right? Like for the premium list, I can't tell you guys like my play by play. Otherwise, you know, you know, it's like I have to reserve some of that for the premium list. So I give people my play by plays there. So if you want to check that out again, into the cryptoverse.com. I mean, I'm not going to I mean, I've laid out a lot of it for you. Um, but if you want to know what I'm doing, you, you need to check that out. And I'll just put it in the in the comments again. And I, I'm I'm seeing a lot of people getting really excited when I said eighty dollar link in sixteen months. And I, I just want to reiterate one more time: this is a very bullish scenario. Like meaning, like 
the best case scenario I could imagine would be Link getting to $80 in 16 months. And again, it's not what I can imagine. It's just what this trend line suggests might happen um, if this trend is upheld. If that is upheld, that is where it'll go. Um, if it's not upheld, that's not where it'll go. It's as simple as that. So what other questions do we have here? So I am getting a lot of uh, repetitive questions, like people asking about Litecoin. So we, we've spoken about Litecoin. Um, we've spoken about, you know, Link, spoken about XRP, spoken about Bitcoin. I did, you know, Ethereum Bitcoin. Um, this was, you know, this was one of those ones we've, you know, we've been following a lot. Um, and, and we said, right, I mean, you know, Ethereum Bitcoin, it's, it's been in a general uptrend now for a while. And you know, anytime Bitcoin is gonna make a big move like this, the ratio is gonna bleed and then the sentiment changes. But if Bitcoin were to stabilize, you know, at a certain level, then Ethereum is gonna keep moving. It, it's just, you know, when Bitcoin makes these moves, Ethereum is gonna bleed with respect to it. It's just the truth, right? And this is why you have the stop losses set if, you, if you're open to the idea of swing trading these key positional moves. If you're not, there's no problem with that. You just, you know, you just continue to DCA into the market. You just, you know, you just hold it, right? I mean, you just accumulate it. There's nothing wrong with just accumulating crypto, in my opinion. I mean, if as long as you're getting coins that you think are going to do well, um, then, you know, go for it, right? I mean, in my opinion, though, if, if your entire cryptocurrency portfolio is made up of coins that are not even in the top 10, if you don't have a single top 10 coin, um, then I think there's an issue, right? Because you're, you're just, you're, you're banking too much on some, on a random coin that may or may not ever give you that return you're looking for. Um, and I've said this before in 2023 or whenever the year is, you don't want to be that person that was in crypto in 2020, but didn't make a dime because you invested in all the wrong projects. So that's why I say it's, you know, in my opinion, it's good for me to have a lot of Bitcoin, to have a lot of Ethereum. Um, I have ADA, I have Link. Um, and I have a few others, but I mean, it's, it's important for me to have these coins, these, these bigger coins, because if the market moves, it's most likely because those are the ones helping move the market. Um, yeah, the whole tether, whole tether stuff. I mean, it's one of those things that I think the crypto market kind of just has to accept at the time. I mean, I don't, I think it's, I think it's blown into something. It's, I think it's overblown in a sense. I mean, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to go too much into it, but I, I don't think that, um, I mean, this happens all the time, right? When, when the markets move, that, that obviously is a topic that just always comes up, um, I, I, I don't really have a whole lot to say on it. I, I don't really think it's going it, to, it's going to, you know, change much about this market cycle. I think it's just going to be there. Um, you know, it is, you know, it's the stable coin with a ton of volume on it. Uh, whether you like it or not, that's just the truth. So, um, Someone says, why don't you think Bitcoin would hit 20K this year? It could hit 20K this year. I'm not saying it can't. I'm just saying I don't think it'll hit a sustainable 20K this year. If you look at the regression lines here, you know, if we just actually, I should probably draw it on the um, over here. So let me go ahead and delete all this other stuff that I just drew. So again, the reason is because in you know, the last market cycle, if you take it from the peak, to the regression line, you can see that you know if that's the candle, that's the wick. We met the previous all-time high within our logarithmic regression line. If the same were to happen, not saying that it has to. If the same were to happen, it would take until you know late 2021, 2022 to get there. Um, this is just how long it would take. Uh, so don't discount the possibility, right? I mean, it's possible that we you know that we come up here come back down, maybe come back up, go to 20K. 
in 2020, 2021, get rejected, come back down, and then maybe in 2021 or 2022, then we break it and then we continue on our journey, okay? This could happen, like, I mean, this could happen. I don't think, I think it's a lot less likely that this would happen. So something like this, I don't think that that's gonna happen, okay? I think this is way too optimistic. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think it's gonna take longer. And again, I mean, these are my opinions, you know, I could be wrong. I have been wrong in my life. It's, it's possible for, for me to be wrong. This is just what I think is going to happen. Um, but again, I don't trade, you know, right now I'm trading based on the risk levels. It doesn't matter what happens, right? It's, it's whether Bitcoin goes to 50K in 2020 or not, as long as you react to it appropriately, that's what it's, that's what's important. I mean, we could we could argue all day about who thinks what's going to happen, whether Bitcoin's going to go to 20k this year, next year, the year after. But who really cares? I mean, the point, right, is whenever it does happen, whatever the market's doing at the time, you're capitalizing on it. Because if you're not, then why does it matter what some random YouTuber thought in the first place? So if I pull up, if I pull up the regression line, you can see it, you can see it here going all the way out. So this is the fair value regression line. Um, so this is why I say in 2023, the fair value would be around 30 to 40 K. And I think it'll be, you know, 300% overvalued or so just based on projections that I've shown in prior videos. And I'm not going to, that I'm not going to show here because I, I, I don't want to show the same thing. So I'm just trying to keep up with some of the questions here. Um, and again, let me know what you guys think about this stuff. Um, I'm curious. I'm gonna go ahead and post the Telegram channel again in case you guys want to in case you guys want to join it. I mean Cardano to ten dollars, this would be this would be quite the day, right? I see people see people saying that. Yeah, so if you guys are hearing someone cry, it's because my four year old has just woken up. So I might have to I might have to stop the stream soon and and go attend to him uh because he might be having like one of those like night terrors or something all right guys um i think i'll go ahead and wrap it up there uh because my one of my kids has woken up and my wife is at work so i need to go um uh see how he's doing uh, if you guys like the content, you want to follow along with my um, play-by-plays and get access to the premium list and the premium videos and the Google Sheets dashboard with the risk metrics, then, then check out my website, intothecryptoverse.com. Um, and uh, you know, let me know what you guys think. I mean, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do check out the Telegram channel. We do have the public Telegram channel. There's like 4,500 people in there. Um, so we'd love to have you guys join. I'm pretty active in there. You can, you can go and join and, and, and continue the conversation after the video is finished. If you're looking for a community to really, um, kind of join, talk about crypto. Like if you don't have, you know, if you don't have a community, this is a great community, I think to join, cause we try to patrol it really well and make sure that everyone's acting like adults in there. If you start not acting like adult, you're out. Um, so treat each other with respect, join that telegram community. Um, nightmares of a bear market yeah i think i think my uh my son must be having a nightmare that that bitcoin is crashing or something uh luckily it is not um huh. actually with my 
my um, my wife is pregnant, um, so we're gonna have our third kid in uh, in October. And I, I was joking with her that um, we should name him um, Ether, you know, like after Ethereum. And I was also it's gonna be a boy, uh, but I also told her that if it were if it were a girl, it'd be we should name her Isabella after um, after Bella, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Link, and Ada. Um, but we would know the real meaning of that. Um, but it's a boy, so we can't, we can't call her Isabella. All right, guys, I got to peace out. It's, uh, it's time to, time to go check on him. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, check out all the channels. I'll see you next time. Bye.